I'm going to show you how to expand any photo inside of Lightroom without touching Photoshop one time. Are you ready? Let's get into it. So first off, this works on Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. It does not matter which version you're using. The only thing is you need to make sure you're on the most updated version. So when you open up Lightroom, go to the develop module and go to this little erase section. Make sure that you've got the eraser mode selected. And then you want to make sure that you've got generative AI checked. Now, if that doesn't show up, just make sure you update to the latest version and then we'll be able to use this tool. Okay. If you've used generative AI before, you know, it's pretty handy for removing objects, changing hairstyles, whatever it is you want. You select it. Lightroom's going to look at that image, say, okay, here's a different kind of option you can put there instead. And it's going to give us a few variations and we can see which hairdo we like the best. Let's go with that one. Okay, great. Now, the problem is that if we wanted to do this elsewhere on the image, we can, but we can't do it outside. We can't expand that background. Now here's the workaround I found. Open up the photo that you want to expand. Make sure you've got an edit applied. And then we're going to take a screenshot by hitting shift command four on a Mac, or I believe it is function windows key spacebar on a PC. All right, I'm going to click and drag and take a screenshot of where I want to expand this image. All right, somewhere around there looks pretty good. I'm going to grab that new screenshot, which has been automatically put on my desktop. And I'm going to drag it into Lightroom. I'm going to import it just like that. No presets, no nothing applied. And once that photo is inside of Lightroom, I'm going to head over to the remove tool. I'm going to make sure I've got my eraser selected and generative AI is checked. Now what's cool is before we couldn't add it outside the image, but now we can because we've taken a screenshot that is larger than our initial image. So I'm going to go ahead and paint on everywhere outside of the initial image that is gray in this screenshot. Okay. So go ahead and just click once and do it on the entire thing all at once. I found this works a lot better than clicking multiple times because if you do multiple times, Lightroom is going to look and replace multiple sections. It won't look at it as one cohesive whole. So I've selected everything. Now I can go apply and let Lightroom think for a second. It's going to look hopefully at this part of the image and say, based on this, what should go outside? What kind of background should we give you, Ryan? And you're going to see, okay, we've got variation one, variation two, variation three. And in general, I'm finding it looks pretty freaking good. And it's a lot faster than Photoshop. Now there's a couple caveats to this. Obviously you don't have as much control in Photoshop. You can actually type in and give it some prompts to kind of work off of. But the beauty is let's say that we didn't like any of these options. We can go in here, hit refresh and Lightroom will create three more variations that we can choose from. So let's let it think for a second. And after it's thought, okay, we've got a couple more options. And let's say I like that one or this one, this one, just choose my favorite. This one is definitely my favorite. So I'm going to go with this, but maybe I don't like this particular part of the background. Okay, great. We can layer this on top. We can grab it again and just grab this one little section and say, okay, generate some different options for that for me. And Lightroom is going to think and voila, in about 10 seconds, you're going to have three more options until you have kind of the perfect photo really. And this is so much faster for me than heading into Photoshop, messing around, cropping, going back into Lightroom. Now, let me talk about the downsides here versus the upsides. Downside, you can't use the actual prompts like you would in Photoshop. Downside, it's not going to be quite as high resolution because Photoshop's going to look at the full res file, whereas Lightroom's only going to look at your screenshot. So make sure your screenshot is nice and big to overcome that. And I guess downside number three would be the actual editing afterwards. You're now working on a JPEG file. So only do this once you've actually edited your images. But the results that I'm finding are crazy and insane and super handy. So I don't know if I'm alone. Leave me a comment below. Do you see yourself using this or is this more of a gimmick that you're going to stick to Photoshop? I'd love to hear. Let's take a look at a couple more images. I'm going to head over to the other version of Lightroom. Same exact process. Head into your erase tool, go to remove. Generative AI must be selected. And then I'm going to draw on top of the parts of the image that I want replaced. Okay. Now I am finding that in general, if you have just gray on the outsides, it seems to work a little bit better because sometimes Lightroom gets confused and says, oh, you add a toolbar here. We want a variation of the toolbar when in fact I don't. I just want this image to be the reference, not all of it. So your mileage may vary with this approach. You can play around, but about 75% of the time I'm finding the results are really, really good. So let Lightroom think for a couple of seconds. And voila, you can see that looks pretty freaking amazing for something that Lightroom did in the box. No Photoshop required. Like that is so cool. Let's look at the other variations that it's got for us. Uh, but you can see now we're in Norway. How awesome is that? Okay. Or let's say that I really like this one, but it's kind of messed up the side of this image. No problem. I can go ahead and make a new generative AI click and drag to get over to that other area. All right, go apply. 
whether you're using Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic, give me a thumbs up if this is helpful for you because I am so excited because I can see using it for portfolio photos that you just didn't quite get right, right? Like this one right here. Let's grab a screenshot. We're gonna expand it and try and straighten it because right now it's kind of a scant, so we don't have much of a background. There's just not as much story as I'd like there to be. But if I go into my grid view, I'm gonna import that screenshot. So we'll go in here, remove, draw it on. Do, 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 do. So if you haven't hit that thumbs up button, go ahead, do me a favor. <laughs> if this was helpful, uh, you can hit that thumbs up button. You can also subscribe if you want more content like this. Leave me a comment if you have other questions, ideas, ways of using this that I haven't even mentioned. I would love to hear it. Let's have a conversation. Let's take a look. And voila, you can see this version, for whatever reason, not very good on the right. The left is not too bad. Let's try again. That's okay. And then that one's probably the best. So you're going to see that in general, Lightroom does a great job on like the inner part and the further out towards the sides it gets, kind of the more wonky it can become. So my suggestion would be just go ahead and make it a little bit bigger and wider than you want it. And then you can just crop in and you don't have to worry about the nonsense that happens on the side. So here's before and here's after. Like that's pretty awesome. And what's so great about this is that you can actually take and stack as many of these generative fills as you want. So if your image for whatever reason isn't working the first time, you can try taking a second screenshot. Sometimes that fixes those bugs or you can piece by piece, just build an entire background from scratch. And you can do this layer by layer until you get that perfect composition. So I'm finding this so helpful. I'm really excited to start using this in my portfolio work just to enhance it that little extra bit to fix those photos that were just a little bit too tight and to create some really cool stuff. So if this was helpful. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment in the comments below, and subscribe if you want more content like this. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.